everyone and welcome to the Washita News Show. I'm Caroline Derby here with my co-anchor Izzy Bond and we have the latest Washita News for you. That's right. We are now in week four of being on campus and we are looking forward to having a great rest of the semester. Now for our COVID-19 case update. As of September 7th, Washita has eight active cases of COVID-19. We will continue to update you on this each week. Today our in-studio weather girl Blythe Epp has the weather for you Washita. Blythe? Good morning, Washita Weather Watchers. This is Blythe Epp with your five-day weather report for this week. We're starting today, Wednesday, September 9th, with a high of 90 degrees, leading with a 40% chance of rainstorms in the afternoon. Today will also be mostly cloudy and humid for the majority of the day. Thursday like, looks like it's going to be mostly the same as the day before, with a high of 92 degrees. There will be thunderstorms in parts of the area, so watch out for rain on this semi-sunny day. Moving on to Friday, we have a mostly sunny day with a high of 91 degrees. There's a 51% chance of rain in Friday's forecast, so be ready for that as well. Getting towards the end of the week, Saturday is looking very promising with a 24% chance of rain. The 12th is predicted to stay mostly sunny and warm with a high of 91 degrees. Finally, we're on to Sunday, which looks like it will be a good day to go out and enjoy some of the great weather and sunshine. With that, there's a 0% chance of rain so far, and the high for Sunday will be 83 degrees. Sunday fun day, am I right? Well, that concludes your five-day weather report for this week with predictions by AccuWeather. This is Blythe F with your weather forecast for this week, whether you like it or not. Thanks, Blythe. Moore partnered with the English department to bring a book discussion of the book Hot Comb to Washita's campus. Brianna Watson has the story for you. Washita Baptist University is home to over 50 clubs and organizations. And this week, the English department supported Moore, multicultural organization reaching equality, in a special reading of Hot Comb, a memoir which tells the life story of Ebony Flowers, an African-American woman, through describing her personal experiences with hair care. I was able to sit down with Amy Songheim, a professor of English, language, and literature at Washita, to discuss the book and the significance of on-campus organizations like Moore. So it starts when she's a young girl wanting to fit in and, you know, be like other girls that look like her, wanting to have hair that looks like her. And so the conflict is that a hot comb straightens the hair and in African-American hair culture to straighten one's hair to use chemicals is getting a perm and so it can be quite traumatic because it can take a long time but it's not about the finances of hair care it's uh, about so the social psychological um, effects of hair care. According to Amy Sonheim, the narrative told by the graphic novel has a lot to tell us about ourselves, whether we identify as students of color or not. Moore uses stories like this to encourage students, but this is not the only way it helps them find success at Washita. It would recognize that the universal is, yes, we're all created in the image of God. Yes, we're all children in His sight. Yes, we're all human. Yes, we all matter, but just as the way I study poetry means you have to look at the differences first, more help students of color flourish at Washita by recognizing the differences, by paying attention that we are all equal, but we, we are all very different, so each of us needs a different type of attention. The partnership between the English department and Moore on this book discussion further exemplifies the heart of both programs, the desire for students of all kinds to recognize the purposeful nature of their design and practice empathy to understand what being designed in God's image means for others, students of color included. I'm Brianna Watson, signing off from the Washington News Show. 
Thanks, Brianna. This past week, Washtenaw mm -hmm. announced that it has the highest enrollment numbers in 20 years. Dr. Sells provided an inside look at this achievement. Even in the midst of COVID-19, Washita continues to flourish. The fall 2020 enrollment number is the highest it has been in 20 years. According to Dr. Ben Sells, this is a result of the community that Washita tries to foster. You know, I was just visiting with a prospective student today. It was her first time on campus. And I said, how would you describe Washita after just a couple hours? I think it's a good test case. And she said, I think it's really personal here. And I do think we do that well. This is a place where we want to know students. We want to do life together with students over four years. The good, the challenges on this journey together. Washita also recently added a few graduate programs, and this also accounts for the increase in the enrollment numbers. However, there were several other factors affecting this year's enrollment. So we want people, whether it's undergraduate or graduate students, who feel like this is the right place for me. This is God's best for me, and we want to make that happen. But the biggest factor in this semester's enrollment numbers was the faculty and staff's dedication to ensuring face-to-face -face instruction this semester. I think there's a lot of interest in Washita, and, and that helps, and I think Washita is better known. Our faculty and staff this summer worked really hard uh, to make it possible for students to return and to do that safely. And I think we conveyed that to prospective students and current students that gave them confidence we could do this only one third of all the universities in the country are primarily face to face. So I think it's interest in Washita, the preparation, uh, but I also think students wanted to be here. And so let's do this together. The increased in enrollment shows how strong the Washita community is despite the challenges 2020 has brought. Washita currently has 1,704 students enrolled through on campus instruction and graduate programs, as well as concurrent credit high school students. Since the Washita football season has been postponed, the band is unable to march this fall. Despite the letdown of not having football, Mr. Jim Lloyd, director of athletic bands, says the band is still finding ways to have a known presence on campus. The purpose of the marching band is to promote uh, school spirit, engage students, and support the team. For us to be able to be a known presence on campus outside of football games, uh, we quickly came up with an idea to provide uh, Thursday afternoon concerts. We're doing a uh, about a 15 to 20 minute mini concert out here on the steps of maybe. Um, of just a lot of the music that we would, you would hear us play at a football game. We're also playing music from our show from this year. Um, and so it's just a lot of fun as people are on their way to dinner. And it's only 15 minutes and the kids have a good time playing it. I'm planning on every other Thursday having the marching band out here doing something. So we want to keep a musical presence here on campus and, you know, have some sense of normalcy for everyone. The band will continue to perform every Thursday on the steps of Maybe Fine Arts Building, and their next concert will be September 17th. The weekend is almost here, and with that comes Stu Fridays. There will be live music at Dr. Jack's this Friday at 12:15. Also, with the weekend comes Washita Student Life Saturday. This weekend, the Washita Cheer Team is showing Remember the Titans Saturday night at 8 p.m. Social distancing and masks are required. Well, that's all for now, Washita. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at Washita News and at Washita Weather Watch. Stay safe, stay happy, and stay healthy, Tigers. We'll see you next week with more of the latest Washita News.